بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اللهم صل وسلم على خاتم النبيين ومن تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Now we're going to continue with the book The Three Fundamental Principles by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. May Allah have mercy upon him. Now, in this sitting, we're going to go through the third principle, which is related to having knowledge of Prophet Muhammad. Now, let's look at the lineage of the Prophet. Prophet Muhammad is the son of Abdullah who is the son of Abdul Muttalib who is the son of Hashim now Hashim is an Arab that was in Mecca the Arabs are descendant of Ismail and Ismail is a child of Abraham may Allah send peace and blessings upon Abraham and his sons now let's look at the beginning of prophethood on this special being Muhammad Prophet Muhammad lived for 63 years on this earth he was made a prophet by the age of 40 then he lived on for 23 more years. How, that we, how do we know that he became a prophet at the age of 40? And also a messenger? How do we know? We know this by the revelation of Surah Al-Alaqa. And he became a messenger with the revelation of Surah Al-Muddathir. So a prophet, when the revelation of Alaq was given to him, and also a messenger when he was revealed Surah Al-Muddathir. Now let's look at these ayah, the verse that proves my say. And it's a saying of Allah in his Quran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها المدثر قم فأنذر وربك فكبر وثيابك فطهر والرجز فهجر ولا ولا تمن تستكثر ولربك فاصبر These are the verses and these verses are in سورة المدثر The verses mean O oh, you enveloped in garments, arrays and worn, exalt your Lord, purify your garments, keep away from a rajz, give not a thing in order to have more of it, be patient for the sake of Allah. Now what does these verses mean? The meaning arise and warn it means to get up and warn the people against shirk which is polytheism and to encourage tawheed so basically through this simple verse it's saying that we should not worship anything with Allah and we should exalt Allah and worship him Sincerely through a tawheed, oneness, giving Allah his rights. Now the other verse says, exalt your Lord. Exalt him, exalt him through tawheed. And the meaning of purify your garments, this means to purify oneself from shirk. Oneself and one deeds from shirk. And the other verse, keep away from a Ruj is the name of an idol or idols that were in Mecca. Keeping away from them by leaving 
all acts of worship to this or these idols and disassociating oneself from all these people that worship these idols. So, Tawheed is really and highly recommended for a Muslim to, to follow through his life. If he doesn't have Tawheed, all of, all of his actions or her actions are nullified. So we can say it's more than recommended, it's a must. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقُتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have surely not created the human being and jinns except that they should worship me. So Tawheed is a must in one's life. So I recommend it, it's a must for you. Now let's move on. The message of, message of Prophet Muhammad in Mecca. Now, in the implementing the above verse that I just have just quoted to you, the Prophet وسلم, spent 10 years preaching Tawheed in Mecca. After the 10th year, he was risen up to the heavens, Laylatul Mi'raj, where the five compulsory prayers were given to him. And then, after the three years left, of his, you know, he's, he's settling in Mecca because he stayed there for 13 years in Mecca, 10 years calling people to Tawheed. On the 10th year, he went up to the heavens where the prayers were made compulsory upon him. For the rest of the three years, he spent praying in Mecca before he migrated to Medina. Now, the Hijra of the Prophet to Medina. What is Hijra? Now, Hijra, as the scholars give the definition that Hijra is the movement of Muslims from the land of polytheism to the land of Tawheed, the land of the Muslims. That's what Hijra is. To move from the place that people are ascribing or worshipping other than Allah to go to a place on the land where you can worship your Lord in oneness and in truth. The battle of Islam. Now, Hijrah will be compulsory upon the Muslim until the day of judgment. And of course, there are conditions with this compulsion. It will remain compulsory up on the Day of Judgment, as I've said before. Now, what's the proof of this from the Qur'an? Now, Allah the Most High has said, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّ الَّذِي تَوَفَّاهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ ظَالِمِي أَنفُسِهِمْ قَالُوا فِي مَا كُنْتُمْ قَالُوا كُنَّا مُسْتَدْعَفِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا أَلَمْ تَكُنْ أَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسِعَةٌ فَتُهَاجِرُوا فِيهَا قَالُوا أَلَمْ تَكُنْ أَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسِعَةٌ فَتُهَاجِرُوا فِيهَا فَأُولَئِكَ مَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا إِلَّا الْمُسْتَدْعَفِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِلَّا الْمُسْتَدْعَفِينَ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ وَالنِّسَاءِ وَالْوِلْدَانِ مَا لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ حِيلَةً لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ حِيلَةً وَلَا يَهْدُونَ يَهْدُونَ سَبِيلًا فَأُولَئِكَ عَسَى اللَّهُ أَن يَعْفُو عَنْهُمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا غَفُورًا this is in chapter Nisa. Those people who the angel took when they were in a state of wrongdoing themselves. The angel said to them, in what conditions were you? They will reply, we were weak and oppressed on the land. The angels will then say, wasn't it possible that you could move to another place on the or Allah's earth to establish, you know, worship for the sake of Allah? Such men will find their abidance 
in the fire. And what an evil destination that will be. Except the weak ones from the men, women, and children who cannot find any way or any means to move from the land of shirk to the Belad or the country of Islam. So they will be directed, except those ones among men and women who cannot diverse a plan, or are they able to direct their way to another place to worship Allah, the, bed, the country of Tawheed. For those people, there is a hope that Allah will forgive them. And Allah is ever of forgiving. And there's another verse from the Quran. Where does it say? Allah says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا عباد الذي آمنوا إن أرضي واسعة فإياه فإياه فعبدون. This is in chapter Ankabut, verses 56. The ayah says, "O my slaves who believe, verily my earth is spacious, so worship me." Now, we're going to stop here in this book, in this saying. But there are a few pointers I would like to say in the rest of the sitting. Now, the scholars have spoken about migrating. Migration, it's very important, brothers and sisters, especially in this time. It's important for us to protect our religion, protect our children, protect our deeds on the land before we die. We never know when we'll die. We have to work hard. Now, if you are monetarily able to move from a disbelieving country to the country of Islam, Muslim country, where you can practice your religion, you should do it. You never can tell. Your religion might just get weaker and weaker and weaker. And verily, you should know that. The Christians and the Jews, or the disbelievers themselves, they will never be happy until you follow their religion. They'll never be happy. So it's up on you, if you are able to, to make migration in order to protect your religion and your kids. Now, life is not easy within the bounds of disbelief. There will always be fallbacks with Non-Muslims, they'll always try to push you back to be like them, guys. So you have to protect yourself, protect your deen, and protect your kids. Because when you die, your kids will be left. And what can assure you that? They will be upon the pure Islam that you taught them. Day of judgment is coming slowly and slowly towards us. And there are many signs. Signs that we should worship our Lord. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.